Today I'd like to talk to you about some updates that we've done to version 16.0.2 of Risa 3D. One of the updates that we've done is we've enhanced the auto mesh feature of our plate drawing tool. Another feature that we've added in this recent release is the ability to change all your plate local axes to either be nodal or global. First I'll show you the improved auto mesh feature on the plate drawing tools. Uh, as you can see I've got a model here. This is actually the Risa floor sample model. It just doesn't have any of the beams or diaphragms drawn in. Just as an example I'll draw in a plate auto mesh on the top floor uh, in place of any rigid or semi-rigid diaphragm. To do this I'll first unselect uh, all the points on the second floor and the base and just have the points on the top floor. Um, I've already got a selected a saved selection state for this so I'll go over to my save or recall selection states for the model button and then I'll go to the selection for just the roof nodes, columns, and walls. Retrieve that and there you'll see I'll go ahead and lock the unselected part of the model as well so we can just see it a little bit more clearly you'll see all the points just on the roof level. If I go into an XY elevation plane, there you see they're all there. I'll turn off the labels because they're not too big of a concern for me right now. Next I'd like to go into a plan view, so I'll pick my XZ plane and I'll see all the nodes that I have of my model. I would like to just do a plate auto mesh over this back curved area and model it as if it were a semi-rigid diaphragm. So first thing I'll do is I'll turn on my graphic editing toolbar. You can either click the little button here with the pencil in it or you can actually hit the control G bar as it shows in the notes there. After that I'll select my draw new plates tool. I will go over to the auto mesh tab. I'll use just general concrete three, uh, 3000 normal weight uh, thickness, let's just go ahead and do a six inch slab. Plate edge minimum, one foot's pretty small, but let's go ahead and stick with that. And let's go ahead and start drawing. So we'll scroll into this area here. And like I said, I just want to get this little curved section here. So I'll start at the center. I'll actually go out to the curved section and then just snap to each of the points along the perimeter. And then finally click on the last spot or double click and it will show an auto mesh of that area. Now, like I said, it's a pretty small mesh, but the auto mesh feature is concentrating more around specific locations where it actually needs to mesh a little tighter. And it's able to do this curve pretty flawlessly and be able to collect all those points. Now, just for fun, we could actually draw in another portion. Let's say just this uh, somewhat square or rectangular area down below just to show how well it'll actually mesh with the plates above automatically using that auto mesh feature. Using all the same settings we'll go ahead and start drawing here. I like to start probably in this corner just for fun and like I said just go ahead and click around the perimeter here maybe step it in right here and the final point now because it is meshing all these automatically and it's doing a lot of work in the background, it may take it a second to actually pop up. But when it does, it's not only going to mesh around all those corners nicely, but everywhere that there's a column location, it'll actually mesh it properly around those as well. And then up around the top set of plates, it'll mesh it to those as well. So obviously with a plate mesh, you're drawing in a lot of elements, so it is becomes a big model pretty quick. Now along that line where it's meeting there you can see all those points are actually landing on nodes of each other so it's actually meshing it properly. If we go ahead and go back a little bit and we go into our ISO view and we can let's go ahead and turn on our the rest of our model by unlocking it and we'll go all nodes Okay, 
So, and because I didn't have those plates originally drawn, now it doesn't have those selection because those weren't selected in the uh, selection state that was saved. So just turn everything on there. And I can see everywhere that there's a column, it's going to be actually landing corners of the plates on that moment or that uh, top of that column there. And you can see that at each of these locations. Now, another thing is when you're actually showing forces on these, uh, if you show the contour plots, which can be found in the model display options or by printing F, pressing F2, you can actually go to your plates and you'll be able to show the contours for those. Now, obviously, it's not going to show it yet because we don't have anything run. So we do have some basic loads in here. So we'll go ahead and open our BLCs. Yeah, we've got some gravity load, uh, self-weight load. That's enough to actually see stuff, so that's fine. We will go into our load combinations now and just say we're going to use BLC1 and do it a factor of 1. And that'll just give us a real basic, we could call this a dead load, load combination. Pretty simple. Now you can either hit F7 or press the equals button up at the top to perform the analysis. We'll go ahead and just run the single dead load just so we can actually see some plate contours. I like to show the contours because it gives you a visual of how your whole model is actually being stressed. Now right now it's uh, doing some calculations on the wall panels and so forth. And like I said, with the mesh of these plates so small, it's actually doing quite a bit of work in the background. So it may take it a little bit. Um, after the solve is all finished up, we'll go ahead and the contour should show up automatically. We can ignore those instabilities for right now and we can see a little bit of concentration of plate forces just around the tops of the columns. Now, what I like to do is, you can actually see that that's looking at plate shear right there. What we can do is we can actually go back up to our model display options and change some of the contour controls for the plates. And maybe we'll go to MX to see what kind of moments we have. Um, you can see actually at the location of the columns where it's getting a little bit more moment around them as you would expect. Now let's just go ahead, what it's kind of to make the uh, model, you know, a little bit more colorful, we can adjust our range. And since right now we're going from about negative 8.1 up to the darkest I see is around, you know, that purplish color. So maybe we'll just go up to 25 just to make it pop a little bit. Go 25, and we can go negative 8 here, and apply, and it kind of just gives you a little bit more variety there, a little, little larger range. So the reason these are coming out so nicely is all the plates are actually aligned with their local axes, and that's one thing that we have improved on is we give you the option for that local axes for your plates to be either nodal or global. Now the default in 16.0.2 of RESA 3D is going to be set to global for your plate local axes. Now you can access these, as I just did, through the global model settings. Go to the Solutions tab, and under Orientation you'll see Plate Local Axes, and right now it's set to global. Now we have it defaulted to global, but when you bring in a older model that didn't have global plate local axes, it's going to come in as nodal and you'll need to actually change that to be global if you want to see them global. The problem with them being nodal is you may not see your local axes aligned with all your plates. So, and you can tell this, it's going to look a little cluttered at first, but let's zoom into a specific area here. and we'll go up to our model display options again, change our plates to wireframe, and have it show the local axes, and apply. Now all the little green is actually your local axes, so we'll go ahead and zoom in a little further there, 
And as we get closer, you'll notice that all those plates, even the ones in this bottom corner here that are uh, not so uniform, all their local axes are still going the same direction. Now, if you'd like, you can actually go into your either our plate spreadsheets and you can actually go to the advanced tab and you can auto rotate your plates and it will rotate the plates about their plane that they're drawn in. You can also adjust the plate local axes by going into the plate it will actually cancel our solutions there you can go into modify plates and you can actually select the local axis rotation and rotate them. Now if you happen to draw a set of plates in the same plane but you drew them you know like an adjoining area that was going about the counterclockwise direction instead of the clockwise that you did originally you can actually select just the ones that are the exact opposite so they'll be actually have probably the Z in the negative direction um, and you can do an out of plane flip and you can use that and flip just those. So instead we'll just go ahead and close. Now by having all these plates aligned it will show us accurate contours and based on the different forces and the different directions that you're actually looking in. Uh, before if you didn't have those plates aligned the results would be a little scattered and they wouldn't be very clear and the contours might look a little strange. So this is a much more accurate way of looking at the results as well as displaying them. And if you'd like to see any more information about the Auto Mesh tool or the plate local axes uh, adjustment for either nodal or global, you can actually go to our RISA help, which is by pressing F1 anytime you're within the program or going up to help and go to help topics. And that will have more information under there as well.